You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor Wade. I'm the Coon Hound Program Manager at UKC. And I'm joined today by the Director of Hunting Ops, Alan Gingrich. What's going on today, Alan? I'm doing fine. We just had a nice little dinner. Somebody brought some lunch in for everybody today. That was pretty good. But it's been warm outside. The dog days of summer are definitely here. Yeah, if you end up hunting this evening, uh, that that barbecue is going to be weighing heavy yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got kind of a fun episode to do today. We, uh, back, uh, I don't know, it's been about a month ago, episode-wise, talking to Jamie Eastep, and we talked about how Spotlight Series was coming to an end. And, you know, all the all the reports are in now. They've all been processed. The points have been tallied, and we got some winners to talk about today. There we go. And I always love doing this. It's a, These kids work hard for these, and I've had a bunch of people messaging me they're ready for it to be finalized and they're posted online we'll have them on social media in the next several days uh so it's go time now so we might as well get rolling so this year's spotlight series ran from june 1st 2023 through may 31st 2024 yeah and that's kind of by design to have it through that time period that way we can uh we can uh recognize the winners at youth nationals in july so that's a good timeline for it and it's worked out pretty well yeah, it does work out well. So I hope to get the hope to get the jackets ordered and and there by then you surely won't be wanting to wear them in July, but at least yeah. we'll be able to to give them to you in front of all your peers and yeah and well, otherwise. Well, I know you get to do all those awards for them at the Youth Nationals. I used to do them when uh, when I was doing it, and it's one of those I always enjoyed. Kids love it, you know. And they, you're right; they put a lot of they put a lot of time and they're serious about it, and and uh, good for them, man. It's a fun little program for them, fun little series. Absolutely. And real quick, before we get started, there would be no Next Generation Spotlight Series without its presenting sponsor, uh, Ray Conrad and Bright Eyes Lights. Can't say enough about them. That's that's right. He does a whole lot for the sport and he does a whole lot for the kids in the sport. And this is one of them, this spotlight or this uh, this series, as well as Youth Nationals. You know, we got our shipment of lights in that you're going to be handing out at the Youth Nationals. I think in, in all 20 of them, you're going to give away there. Uh, the Spotlight Series uh, winners, were, they're all going to get a brand new hunting light from uh, from Bright Eyes and a nice one. Good yeah. little light, too. Yeah. And uh, just so you know, Ray, he doesn't just donate to UKC's uh, events, but if you go around to some youth, different youth events, there's a lot of things that he donates to throughout the year. You'll see a lot of Bright Eyes uh, lights there. Uh, as prizes and he's just he does a lot for the sport so next time you need a light be sure you remember that yep and there's a little kind of a little uh special light this year that they're giving out the avery what what is this called the avery, avery edition? edition avery yeah. edition you know so there's uh there's obviously a, a little story behind that avery is uh you can you can tell it better than i can but uh, i'm sure the kids will hear about it at the youth nationals when they get there so yeah that's it's gonna right. be a special light this year avery davis jeremy davis's son and sure. obviously people saw a couple of years ago, uh, he uh, passed tragically, uh, way, way too young. And uh, uh, Jeremy, down there, he's from down there in South Carolina area, right around Orangeburg, I believe, right there. He, he yes, owns yes, sir. Carolina yep. Coon Hunters. Uh, so he travels to a lot of events. And, uh, yeah, uh, Ray did put that on his lights as well. So a great thing and uh, something to be proud of if you're wearing that light with his name on there. That's right. That's right. So we're going to start out uh, by announcing our Spotlight Series winners, and some uh, we're going to announce the whole top five for each of the four different categories. And we'll start out with the Senior Division Night Hunt category, okay. which was down to the wire. Uh, we had two two gals who were who were neck and neck almost the entire year. It seemed like every time one got a cast win, the other one did as well. And uh, it actually they actually ended up tied and had to go to the tiebreakers. And the first tiebreaker that we have is for the hunt is most first place wins. So. After calculating that, we got our our overall winner, and this year the Senior Division Night Hunt winner is Brooke Snead of Cherryville, North Carolina. There you go. Seems like I've heard that name before in the last year or so. Yeah, she had a heck of a year. So she's 16 years old as of today. Uh, she accrued 80 points this year off of five cast wins, and the reason that she probably stands out in your name is that she was our 2023 Youth National Senior Division Champion. I knew that's where it was from. That's where I first heard the name. And uh, yeah, so uh, obviously that uh, 
The Youth Nationals is one of the first. It's a double points event. So obviously last year that uh, kind of set her well on the way, you know, probably. And, uh, hey, she made good on it. Look at it. Yeah. So at Youth Nationals last year on Friday night, she won her cast and got fifth overall. On Saturday, she won her cast and got ninth overall. And the double cast wins were good enough to get her into the final cast where she won another cast. So yeah. She went undefeated that weekend. She added another couple wins throughout the year, including uh, I think she was overall winner at the 2024 North Carolina Youth State Championship. So a great year for Brooke and a great accomplishment. 16 years old. So she's still got a little another year left to make a run if she yeah. wants to try to double up on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, hey, we congratulate Brooke and uh, on her good year and on this big win here in the senior night hunt division. And well done. Good job. Good job, Brooke. In second place this year and tied with 80 points was Dixie Manns of Hearts, West Virginia. Uh, Dixie's 15 years old, and of those 80 points, five cast wins made up that, that 80 points for Dixie. Yeah, well, we know Dixie's mom and dad quite well, you know, and, and uh, Dixie doesn't say a whole lot, at least. You know, she's, uh, you know what, those kids are raised good, and they love to hunt. It doesn't seem, you see photos and pictures of them and videos of them, the whole family is out hunting, whether it's coon hunting or bear hunting or riding motorcycles, you see some of that too, but they're very, they're, they're in the outdoors all the time, and um Man, they don't get any better, and, and Dixie had a good year, too. She tied, you know, for the lead, uh, but had a great year. And um, can't say enough about the man's family, and Dixie is one of the daughters here who is who's just w wins a lot. What's the name of her dog, that, that female? She, She's uh, been hunting cricket. Cricket. Cricket yep. she's winning with quite a bit, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so some of her notable wins this year, she was a cast winner at the Pennsylvania State Youth Championship. Yeah which is actually coming up, uh, or by the time you hear this, it'll already yeah, pass, right. but last weekend of June. Um, and also a double cast winner at Youth Nationals last year as well. She got seventh place on Friday, fourth place on Saturday, ended up going out on the final cast where she got th third overall there. So a heck of a year for Dixie. Yeah, congratulations to Dixie. Hearts, West Virginia. And I'm not sure I would hunt as much as she was born there, I guess. So those, But those mountains and hills where they hunt are not for – uh, Alan Gingrich and the faint at heart. I don't the faint think. of heart. It's West Virginia. <laughs> uh, but they don't know any, they don't know any different. No, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. No, but they sure, it, you can tell they have a lot of fun with their dogs. Like I said, bear hunting. I think they have just as much fun bear hunting as they do coon hunting. I think they just love being outdoors and being out there with the dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had a couple uh, here tied for third place. One of them would be Dylan Hurst of Big Creek, West Virginia. Uh, Dylan's 17 years old and accrued 40 points this year, including the cast win at the Ohio State Championship. And Dylan, he's a he's a guy who also runs the road with the Mans. Chad Mans takes him to a few events, so uh, that's where you may see Dylan around. There you go. And then there's uh, there's also another Dylan, a Logan Dylan of Kermit, West Virginia, also in the same state, also tied with 40 points. Another 17 year old. And um, he had, looks like he had double cast wins last year at the uh, at the youth nationals. Placed fourth on Friday and tenth on Saturday, and and uh, for an overall finish, second overall in the tied for second in the senior division there. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually he, tied for third, tied yeah, for third, tied for second third. overall in that in senior. the youth nationals, second overall. Yeah. Yep, yep. There you yeah. Go. So West Virginia, well represented there, three yeah. in the top four from West Virginia. So great showing for that state this year. Uh, we actually had six. Kids tied for fifth overall with 30 points each. So just going to mention them quickly. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Black of Wattsburg, Pennsylvania. A Keegan Summers of New Lothrop, Michigan. Claydrick Proctor of Moravia, Iowa. They're trying to trip me up with some of these names yeah. here. <laughs> uh, Libby Ann Lancaster makes another appearance on these lists of Memphis, Nebraska. She's been steady on these lists the past several years. Spade Stanfield of Jamestown, Ohio. And Sydney Davis of Butler, Missouri. Yeah, kind of a, a, a kind of from all different parts of the country, right there: Pennsylvania, Michigan, Iowa, Nebraska, Ohio, Missouri. Well represented. Yeah, well represented. Then we had the Carolina. Uh, Carolina it was uh, Brooks Needs from the Carolinas, North Carolina, and then two from West Virginia. So yeah. So hey, congratulations to all those kids. You know, we know they work hard at it, and it's not. Uh, you know they have to do their homework at home with their dogs and this and that, learn their dogs, and uh, but it's good to see that they've uh, went out to these events and did did very well this last year. So congratulations to all of them. That's right. Good job. 
Now let's head down to division. We're going to go to the younger ones, junior That's division. The 12, 12 and under, 12 yeah. and under classes. That's right. And our overall winner here was able to squeak out a win at, uh, just here recently at the Maryland State Champ- Youth Championship to secure his win. And this is Brady Clark of Orbasania, Pennsylvania. There you go. I'm not sure what part of the state that is. I've not actually even heard of it there, but 11 years old. So, yeah, congratulations to Brady. 60 points he got this, he earned this last year. Yeah, three cast wins. He uh, had a cast win at the 23 Pennsylvania State Championship. Like I said, the 24 Maryland State Championship. And was actually a cast winner down in Kentucky at uh, Youth Nationals one of the nights. So, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Kentucky, he's been all over the place at yeah, points. There you go. There you go. Congratulations, Brady, even if you did make up that city. <laughs> Yeah, we got a few here tied for second place with 40 points each. The first one's going to be Miss Alice Russell of Summersville, Kentucky. Uh, She's 11 years old and had 40 points this year off of two cast wins, which actually both came at Youth Nationals last year, which was in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, so probably uh, local to there. Uh, She got 10th place on Friday and 5th place on Saturday. Yeah, hey, this 11 years old, that reminds me when I was that age. I got my first dog, my own dog, when I was 12. So, uh, but I was already starting to coon hunt a little bit with some other people and things at this same age, you know, wasn't competing, you know, but, uh, just re- takes me back to those days when I was that age. Yeah. It's been a little while. That's right. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Alice. Yeah. Also tied for a second here is another familiar name for some folks. This is Josh Ashley of Upton, Kentucky. Uh, he actually turned 13 in October. So obviously uh, who, whatever age you are at the beginning of the series year is a, is the division that you'll be a crew in spotlight series points for it for the entire year. However old you were on June the 1st. Then. That's correct. Yeah. So even though he turned 13 in October, he stayed in the standings for the junior division for the entirety of the whole year. There you go. And he had 40 points as well off two cast wins, which both came at youth nationals. And, uh, Josh, he had quite the youth nationals. He got ninth place on Friday on Saturday, his dog from Friday had came in heat, so he had to use a different dog, and he got eighth place on Saturday. So he had double cast wins with two different dogs, and he had accrued enough points to be our junior division yeah. youth national champion. I remember talking about him about a year ago, not quite a year ago after the nationals. Yeah, so congratulations. Another good year for him, not just at the nationals, but here in the series. Tough enough to learn one dog when you're 12, let alone two. No kidding. And then we had one more tied for second, and this was Kaysen Apple of Otomo, Iowa. Uh, Kaysen also aged out of this division. Uh, he turned 13 in May, but his points stayed uh, steady for the entire year. So he just actually turned 13 just recently, yeah, just I last don't, month. I don't know if I, if, I, if I know the family. I'm assuming it might be one of the, the Jake Apple's daughter or uh, sons here or not. I don't know the answer to that, yeah, but I'm well, assuming so. I should have should, should, should looked it up. I uh, if that's the case, why well, I would know his family. But, uh, yeah, congratulations to Kaysen. He actually accrued his 40 points off of four different cast wins, so four different YEP events. And if you'll see there, he's from Southern Iowa, which we've talked about that Southern Iowa youth event. Yep. They have the series going, and that's a big part of why Youth Nationals is going there this year. Yeah, and be in his backyard. he would probably be tough to beat around there. Yeah. looks like he's pretty steady winning. There you go. There you go. And then also we had five tied with 30 points each. Um, Annabelle Davis of Orangeburg, South Carolina. We've already mentioned uh, her dad, Jeremy. He runs around to a lot of the events. So Annabelle, I'm sure she'll be uh, making a run at it this year as well. Uh, We have Bryson Rhodes of Ripley, West Virginia, who actually won the junior division of the night hunt portion last year. So again, places here tied, uh, tied with 30 points. Jordan Edmonds of Upton, Kentucky. See Jordan had a few of the majors. She was just at uh, black and tan days with her dad, Blake, who, uh, who runs her up and down, so good to see Jordan on here. Remy Eason of Swanton, Ohio. Don't know if I know Remy, but uh, looks like she had, or he or she had a great show yep. in this year. Mm-hmm. And then Will Nance of Balco, Oklahoma. See Will, he's kind of a, a younger guy who's pretty outgoing. I always get a, a crack. I always crack up about some of the younger guys who just come up and talk to you like they're a grown-up and they're mature beyond years and He's a part of Jason Hunter's pro staff, and he's part of Bad Habit. Now he was selling Bad Habit stuff at uh, English Days a couple of weeks ago like he was a grown-up, so yeah. kind of uh, kind of mature for his age. But congratulations to that whole list of folks. Yeah, I think I met him at the Winter Classic this last year. He and his dad were out there, I believe. Yeah, that's right. So that does it for the junior division of the Night Hunt. So yeah. congratulations to all those folks. Yep, same here. Congratulations, kids. 
Next, we'll move on to the senior division of the bench show, which is always very competitive. We know that from past years, and this year was no different. And uh, this year, after getting second place last year and knocking on the door. 470 points. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Right. Knocking on the door for the past several years. This year's overall winner was Jordan Brooks of Pound and Mill, Virginia. Never heard of her. I wonder. <laughs> never heard of her. Oh, good. First year? First, first year? First year running, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Jordan. We're she... just kidding, Jordan. We know who you are, and congratulations. What an awesome job. Outstanding. Outstanding. Just to be 14 years old, she accrued 470 points, like you said, uh, which is the second highest I've seen. I went through some of the past records and and only the second highest point total that I've ever seen in this senior division of the Spotlight Series. 36 category wins over the year. <laughs> and man, what a what a list. I you know, I wrote down some of the majors here, but my goodness. So in 2023, she had category wins, at least one, probably two at a lot of these at the Pennsylvania State Youth, New York State Youth, Ohio State Youth, obviously Youth Nationals, she won her age class there, Kentucky State Youth, and then Southeastern Tree and Walker Days Youth Show. Then in 2024, she continued her run. She won a category at the 2024 Grand American Youth Show, North Carolina State Youth, Virginia State Youth, and West Virginia State Youth, and that doesn't count all the YEP events she accrued points at through the years. And by my count, which could have been a little off, uh, 10 states that she won different categories in 10 states just incredible really you know and and she's had uh she has good teachers obviously her mom and dad both uh, have always messed with coon hounds her brother jacob and uh and i think they are the only two uh, they're the only two in the family right jordan and jake right and uh yeah so it's good to see a 14 year old jordan she's getting it done and congratulations that's a big big win Big Something win. To be proud of. Nice. Sure. No kidding. 470 points. I know I was talking to Leslie at one event this year, may have been Walker Days or something like that. And she said that uh, Jordan was interested in running. And she said that if you're running it, we're going to run it right. And yeah. I guess they, they weren't bluffing. They went to a lot of different places and probably seen a lot of different things. And I think they had a pretty darn good time doing it. Yeah. Here she is 14 years old and they grow up so fast. It seems like just a couple of years ago, she was like eight or nine, you know, and here she is 14 already. But just the difference, you know, I remember when I first kind of got to know her a little bit, you know, and, and already doing a good job then. But now here at 14 already, as good and better than a lot of adult handlers already with these dogs. But uh, that's what the, you know, it, it's seeing some of this thing with, uh, with what the kids have accomplished in these events. And it just goes to show how it's worth it to have these youth events for the kids, what they learn from them. and, and uh, and the experience they gain from it. And it's just a great platform, these youth events for our younger hunters and bench show kids just like Jordan here. Would you look at me when you say that she's better than a lot of the adult? She's better than you, Trevor. She's a lot better than you. I'll, I'll, I'll go on record to say that. Yeah, just and I'm say sure it. Jordan's going to, if you don't believe me, we'll put you up on a, on a show off with Jordan. I don't want that. I, okay. I do not want that. <laughs> well, then watch what you say here. <laughs> All righty. We got a, a couple here tied for a second. My money's on Jordan. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Uh, All righty, so we got a couple here tied I'm for second. I'm serious about that, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the first one is a name that we've mentioned a, a bunch over the past couple of years, uh, same as Jordan, someone who's just been consistently improving and getting better and better, and this is going to be Hannah Cable of Cleves, Ohio. 17 years old now. Seems like, again, she was just competing in, in you know, just 12, 13 years old. Uh, 270 points this year off of 20 category wins, including uh, category wins at the Ohio State Youth, Youth Nationals, Kentucky State Youth, and West Virginia State Youth. You know, she won the Spotlight Series back in 2020-2021 uh, year. And then for the past three years, she's either been second or third in the other years. So just a consistent winner, no matter where she's at, if she's showing against youth or adults, just a consistent winner. And so good. So good at it, too. You know, it just goes to show how how good uh, like Jordan is, you know, being competing against uh, other uh, handlers like Hannah. Uh, that's just uh, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Good job to Hannah again. She's always there, seems like. And, and uh, yeah, put you up against her too, and I'll take her too. 
<laughs> You're not going to see anybody on this list no, that nobody. I can be. <laughs> Uh, we're just picking on you today trevor uh then uh also tied for a second is miss Haley lewis brindley's not listening to this that we're giving her daddy a hard time she'd beat me too (laughs) (laughs) Uh, she would beat me too so uh yeah so miss Haley lewis of white pine tennessee is also tied for second and and Haley and her sisters have have made a big jump in the youth program the past several years you see them at a lot of the places especially in Tennessee, Virginia area, Kentucky, and they do a great job. Uh, she's only 14 years old, so she she aged up this year after being really competitive in the juniors last year, and she got 270 points off 19 different category wins and just has some great events, Kentucky State Youth, Tennessee State Youth, the Southeastern Trent Walker Days Youth, North Carolina State Youth, and then Virginia State Youth. Yeah. You know, and if you if – you, there's 52 weekends in a year, you know, and 20 category wins. And most of these, you know, are, that's a lot of winning. 19 yeah. and 20 category wins, 36 for the for Jordan. That's incredible. You don't lose much if you're winning that many yeah. categories. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fourth place is Chloe Gibson of St. James, Missouri. Chloe turned 18 in March, so she kind of uh, aged out here early in this year. Uh, but she had a heck of a run before that. Uh, she had 140 points accrued over 11 category wins, including wins at the Missouri State Youth, English Days at their youth championship, and the Arkansas State Youth. And actually, it was a Black and Tan Days queen of show last year, too. So another one who doesn't just excel in the youth events, but also in, in just the regular shows as well. And then rounding out the top five is Mr. Brody Bailey of Mooresboro, North Carolina. Tickled to see Brody up here. He's a young man who loves to hunt and show his dogs. He's proud of it. His dad's proud of it. I talked to his dad quite a bit on the phone. Uh, Brody is 14 years old. 120 points for Brody off 12 different category wins, including some tough ones. Georgia State Championship, the Southeastern Tree and Walker Days Youth Championship. You can the, the Grand official American performance show, dog nutrition partner of the UKC. Shows of the entire year. Yep, and you can tell just uh, the way he is around dogs and shows and things like that. He loves it. He's ate up with it, and uh, and he's had a good year. So congratulations to Brody. And now we head down to the last division, but certainly not least, and that's the junior division bench show. And it seems like, you know, we talked about how competitive the senior bench show division is, but the juniors, man, this, there is uh, the point totals here and, and some of the races that we see here are are just out of control as well. Um, and the first and the, the winner is Miss Brooke Bally of Toma, Wisconsin. Yeah, they're spreading it around. Here's a Wisconsin winner now. They're 11 years old, 300 points, 11 or 21 category wins. So just going through the records, and in the time that I've been here, this is the highest uh, point total I've ever seen in the junior division. So uh, before that time, there may have been more, but this is uh, by and far, or I, I say by, no, last year. Uh, Paisley Warner, who won it last year, had 290, but she was at, she was 10 points higher than that. So what a heck of a year for Brooke. Um, most people may be familiar with Brooke. She's been on this very podcast last year. Around this time, just a couple months later, she was our 2023 Youth National Bench Show Champion uh, for the junior division. And what a, also, what a list of wins here. Missouri State Youth, Black and Tan Days Youth Show, American Redbone Days Youth Show, English Days Youth Show. Wisconsin State Youth, Illinois State Youth, Iowa State Youth, and then a host of different uh, uh, YEP events through the year. So, great run. That's incredible. Congratulations to Brooke. What an outstanding year, and uh, and she's getting recognized for it. And that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, I guarantee she's going to be all smiles when you meet up with her in the awards ceremony at the Youth Nationals. She'll be one of the ones happy that to see Youth Nationals in Iowa this year. Yeah, won't be too awful far. Yeah, there you go. Uh, second place was last year's winner in this division. This is Paisley Warner of Beverly, West Virginia. Paisley's just 10 years old and already stacking up the wins. She had 130 points this year off of 11 different category wins, even uh, including a great run at the West Virginia State Youth. So great job, Paisley. Uh, do you want to talk about third place there? Yeah, it's Leah Penny of Beulahville, North Carolina. She just turned 13 in February this year, so this next year she's going to be in the senior division, But this, so this was her last year. But she had 10 category wins, 110 points is what she finished out with. So good job to Leah and a, a very impressive year for her as well. Third well, place overall. One cool thing about Leah is if you were to go look at our top 10 Ben Show standings right now, you'll see Leah pretty 
See, I, she last I looked, she was first overall in the English uh, breed. Yeah, and here we we're talking about a, a young lady that was competing in the junior division just this last year is in there in the top ten standings against all the adults in the top ten dogs of her breed. Very incredible, young nice lady. job, Leah. Uh, fourth place here, Jackson Cable of Connorsville, Indiana. Just seven years old, Jackson is, so he's the youngest one we'll see on this list. Is he, he still showing that slinky dog? <laughs> I think he's a blue. Well, he's, he's a, been showing some Walker dogs. Has now. he? Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a he has all kinds of breeds. Yeah, he Wal- does. Walkers, blue ticks, slinky dogs, all of them. He has a lot of good. He yeah, he can yeah he has plenty of options. I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what? He's seven years old. Seven, seven years, years old. old. Yeah, a hundred point seven category wins and gosh darn it, that's a good job, Jackson. Yeah, he loves that stuff. You see him with his mom everywhere at all the dog shows and. In the hunts, and you see his dad around his dad too a lot there. But yeah, good year, fourth place overall, seven years old, pretty incredible. Yeah, some of his uh, notable wins were Michigan State Youth, uh, BBCHA Spring Roundup, and then also uh, age win, age class win at Youth Nationals last year. So, uh, moving on here, we have two young ladies tied for fifth place. Uh, one is Eva Eva Lancaster of Memphis, Nebraska. So one of those Lancaster girls again uh, up here vying for the title. Uh, Eva is 11 years old and had 80 points this year, uh, including four category with four category wins. Um, and she had a couple wins each at Kansas State Youth and Nebraska State Youth. So they weren't cheapies. Yeah. Congratulations, Eva. And then the next one there, and the last one we'll mention is also tied for fifth place. And this is Kennedy King of New Salisbury, Indiana. Kennedy is 10 years old, and she had 80 points this year off of seven category wins, including wins at Black and Tan Days Youth Show, English Days Youth Show, and her age class win at Youth Nationals. Yeah, you know, I think we know her her uh, father, Philip, and uh, and he is, I've talked with Philip a lot, uh, and he's talk, he talks about Kennedy all the time, and he is proud of that girl as he should be, and, and look at the year she's had. Good year to, for 10 years old, finished uh, with 80.7 category wins, and Hey, these, we, we talked, just look at all these kids, you know, they have a lot of good competition and it's, they aren't give me's by any stretch. They are competing against some really good handlers and uh, these wins aren't just given to them or handed to them. They have to go out and earn them. They do their work. And, uh, and I know uh, her dad uh, talks about like, or talks about that, you know, about her doing her homework and this and that. And, and obviously he's taking her around and congratulations, fifth overall. 80 yeah. points. Good job, Kennedy. Maybe one day Philip will do something. We can talk about him on here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Just kidding, <laughs> Philip. Just kidding. Uh, uh, but anyways, that, that's kind of a wrap. He's on also our... trying to win his own series right now. So That's right. He's been running yeah. around plenty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of an end, uh, talking about <clears> the winners <throat> here of the Spotlight Series. Uh, obviously, like I said, the uh, year runs from June 1st to May 31st of the next year. So right now as we're taping, the next year series has already started. Kids are already accruing points. Don't get left behind. And like you mentioned, Youth Nationals, that's a great jumping off point. That's a double points event, both in the hunt and the show. So you go there and get a couple wins. As you heard, we mentioned a lot of Youth Nationals winners. That's a great place to put yourself in a in a good standing to be in the running all year yep. long. Third weekend in July, south uh, southeast Iowa, right in the corner of Illinois and Missouri. With Yukonuba, stamina is the one difference I'm seeing. When I'm running hair up north, my dogs will put on 10, 12, 15 miles of solid running, and they just don't tire as easily or as quickly. Oftentimes, my work schedule does not allow me to have the desired physical conditioning on my dogs, but even then, as many as 25 or more miles a day of hard running is just another day in the office. To me, it's been apparent Yukonuba's 3020 Sport formula is making that difference. Yukonuba, the official performance dog nutrition partner of UKC. All right. Well, now that we're here in the, the summer months, that kind of uh, signifies to me that we're nearing the end of our spring, early summer major event schedule, which includes all of the Charter Breed Day events which are now kind of in the late March to to early or late June uh, time frame. So we're going to talk about those a little bit today um, and how those have been going on. 
obviously we've talked about a lot of them already so far. We've talked about uh, how black and tan days went, leopard days, blue ticks, and walker days. But just a few, or we had three here in the in the month of June. Uh, so we'll start out with the first one, English days, and that was June fifth through eighth in Florida, Illinois. And man, they had everything going on that week. It was in early June. It can sometimes be hot, but man, it was super nice there. The weather was nice, and the numbers showed. It was a great, great week for those guys uh, in the English Association. They must be doing something right. I asked them what they've done differently. I said they wish they knew what they were doing right, so they could keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, great year for them. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to start out with uh, with some of their overall winners, which I have a, a big list of the overall winners that they gave out this year. And uh, we may just alternate through these if you want. Sure. Uh, I'll start sure. out with the King of Hunt here. The King of Hunt was a Grand Knight champion, Phillips Hardtime Scooter, obviously an English male owned by Basil Phillips of Ohio. Yeah, I don't know Basil there, but I've, I've heard the name. And uh, But uh, Phillips Hardtime Scooter, um, I think, is... Uh, um, is probably off of uh, Jared Lehman's dog, I assume. Is it? Maybe not. I didn't. I didn't look that up. But uh, yeah, congratulations to to Basil, their King of Hunt, their Queen of Hunt was a Knight Champion Seven Oaks Hard Time Lola, an English owned by Jared uh, as uh, uh, our buddy, our field rep in Greencastle would call him Jared Lehman. <laughs> I think they pronounce it, pr- pronounces it layman. And uh, Kyle Stoops. Uh, Kyle Stoops is up in the north uh, northeast somewhere. Where Maine. In Maine, yeah, way up in Maine there. So they're uh, kennel partners here. Jared is from Indiana, but, yeah, Lolo is the queen of hunt. Congratulations yep. to Jared. It was actually just a great weekend for the whole Seven Oaks team. They they all did a great job that weekend. So congratulations to them on a great weekend. I'm thinking that male dog, I, I'm thinking they are related. I could be off, but maybe not. We should, I should have looked it up, I guess. And maybe while you go on to the next one, I will look it up here just to see see if I can look it up anyways, if I have it here in front of me. but uh, I can tell you the Lola dog is out of uh, Cooper. So. Oh, maybe, that, may, maybe that's what I was thinking too, but. Yeah, so let's shift to the show a little bit. Obviously, the King of Show is a great distinction there, and this year's King of Show was Grand Champion 2, New Heart, Running Man Zeke, uh, owned by Stacy Ragsdale in Iowa. Uh, congratulations on Stacy for that distinction. Great honor. It was a, some big, big shows, uh, some great numbers. I think they had like 60-some like on Thursday and up in the 50s on, on Friday and even Saturday. So it was a heck of a weekend show-wise and number-wise. Yeah, Zeke's got to be getting up there in age a little bit. He's won a lot of shows, and uh, he's, a, he's a mostly white dog, but he's a very well-built dog. He's done his fair share of winning and still is, even as a veteran veteran hound here, still holding his own. Queen of Show was uh, a uh, grand champion, confirmation grand champion, Southeastern's Kentucky Mountain Heart's Desire. Uh, that's a dog owned by Rhonda Brown and Penny Turner out of North Carolina. So Penny and, and Rhonda, they've hooked up in the last 10 years or so and, and uh, showing dogs. You see them at all the big shows, and they've done their fair share of winning and have for a lot of years. Here's another one at English Days, Hearts, Hearts Desire. Tough I, duo. Yeah, for sure. You know, I go back, I mentioned uh, the the scooter dog, the uh, king, of, king of show is, is, is not off of uh, – that dog is off a hard time buck, actually. Seth Ish is old dog. There you go. Yep. Got to the bottom of it. Yep. Similar bloodlines, I would mm, say. It is. Uh, didn't they, uh, they had a senior, or they had a youth hunt, a uh, licensed youth hunt there. They called it their English Youth Championship. And they had a senior division winner and a junior division winner. And their uh, youth hunt senior division winner this year was a dog, night champion, water champion, show champion, Kansas Boys Free Willie. And it was open to all breeds, so I will say that's an English dog owned by Justin Hofstetter and Garrett Fugit of Missouri and handled by Garrett Fugit. He's about 12 foot tall, and he had some luck in the hunt and the show. So congratulations to Garrett on a great week, bud. There you go. Then they had the junior division winner was a dog named Night Champion Hard Time Roaring Rusty, an English dog owned by uh, Steve Ish, handled by uh, Eli Ish. Eli's a young uh, whipper snapper, uh, Seth Ish's boy. Uh, his, uh, his older sister, he has a, one sister in his family there, but, uh, they love to hunt and the outdoor stuff. We talked about, uh, the, the man's kids, you know, in Ottawa, West Virginia, where they're doing a lot of outdoor sports, same thing here with this family, uh, whether it's, whether it's school sports or hunting or what have you, Eli, he's, uh, he's always smiling. <laughs> yeah. He was- always got a big smile on his face. So. He was a youth or youth uh, junior division winner, so congratulations, Eli. Good job, buddy. 
I think Seth's got a couple coon hunters on his hand. He oh, I'm there. sure he does. He was tickled and Izzy. Yeah. She had the opportunity to hunt in the youth hunt if she wanted to, but she won her cast with a pretty decent score on Friday night, so she was going for that queen of hunt title. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, then also they had a youth show as well on Saturday with a great big entry, 40-some dogs. Poor, poor Misty Yarrington came over from Illinois, and she judged the regular show and the youth show, and it probably took four or five hours. I, I helped her out <laughs> on some paperwork on the regular show while she was doing the youth show yeah. to save her a little bit of time. But yeah. Man, uh, again, we talk about uh, some of the youth in our sport right now and just watching some of the show, you would never known it was a youth show if they didn't tell you beforehand. They were great dogs and great handlers. So uh, Youth King of Show is going to be somebody who's pretty familiar to anybody who's been listening to this whole uh, whole podcast so far. Grand Champion 3, All-American Western Justice. That's a tree and walker owned by Megan Perez and Jordan Brooks and Danny Perez. Uh, the Perez's are out of Missouri. And handled by Miss Jordan Brooks from Virginia. Yeah, that's a nice dog, too. I've seen that dog before, and uh, it's probably not the last we'll hear of that dog or the handler, Jordan. Queen of Show there in the youth show was uh, champion Caitlin's Pretty Little Poison. That is a treeing walker owned by Caitlin Baldwin of Tennessee, and that was handled by uh, by Caitlin as well. So uh, I think her dad is probably, is that one of Phillip's daughters, yeah, I Phillip assume? There, there you go. Yeah, so congratulations, Caitlin. Good job. Then obviously, we uh, if, if you've ever been to English Stage, you know how big of a deal their Champions Invitational Classic is on Thursday. That's kind of, they they you qualify for it through the year at either winning at their sectionals or placing at major events in different ways. And they make a big deal of it on Thursday. They have a great prize package for everybody. Um they have an early round, and they end up hunting it off late in a final cast to determine their winner. And this year, the overall winner was Grand Knight champion Indian Creek Loudmouth Hook. That's an English male owned by Michael Mitchell and Lee Wade, and they're out of Indiana. Yeah, congratulations to, to Lee. I think Lee was the, Lee's the one that handled the he dog, did. I think. Yep, there you go. Congratulations to Lee. Vicki Hill Memorial King of Show, and uh, uh, that Vicky Hill Memorial is, has been a part of the English uh, show, English Day show for uh, uh, quite a few years running. And this year it was uh, won by uh, Grand Champion 2, PR Newhart Running Man Zeke, a dog we uh, already mentioned here before. Uh, Stacy Ragsdale out of Iowa won that show, King of Show, in the Vicky Hill Memorial. Doubled up on the weekend. Great weekend for Stacy. Yep. Yeah. And then our Vicky Hill Memorial Queen of Show, which you're right. You, when you go there, that Thursday show, Vicky Hill, uh, prize package is great again, and they put a lot of emphasis on it, and people want to win that show, honestly, just as much as they do the the regular King and Queen. The distinction of winning the Vicky Hill is yeah. is very important to them, and the Vicky Hill Queen of Show this year was Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion, North Stars Keep Me in Mind, owned by Larry Wilhelm of Ohio. Yep, Larry's. You see Larry at all the big shows, Autumn Oaks Winter Classic, all the all the English uh, English days, and some of the other breed days as well when he can get there. You know, but you mentioned Vicky Hill, her and Don Hill, who who's also deceased, uh, but uh, uh, they were out of Rowan Mountain, Tennessee, and showed a lot of English dogs. They, I can I can't remember a time when they weren't showing dogs. You know, and always had nice dogs and did a lot of winning a quiet husband and wife, you know, and, and, uh, didn't say a whole lot, but they knew their, they knew their dogs and were always, uh, supporting the, were always at the big shows and always supported English days. And it's good that they have this Vicky Hill Memorial. Well, let's fast forward one week and the same place, Florida, Illinois, uh, June 12th through 15th was plot days this year. National plot days. The, the NPHA was there and, we actually wasn't there this year. Uh, Jamie Estep, one of our field reps from West Virginia, you've heard him on here before. You've seen him at our major events. He was actually going down there. Uh, his local club uh, sponsored the Wednesday night youth event and got prizes for it, and he was the master hound. So he was going to be there. So I, I left my supplies there and let him uh, do some work for us. And uh, yeah, you I'm mentioned, sure appreciate that. You mentioned awards. I don't think there's a breed hunt or a breed day event in the country that has more awards and you'll see at plot days that's true they have a lot of different events like uh like they say they play all the games there at plot days <laughs> that's an all day it's an all day thing and they, there's something going on starting early in the morning and it goes all day long yeah all you, day and all night actually if you've never been that would be a fun one to go to if you just were going to kind of spectate and soak it in you could see bear bays and 
trian contests and dash races and water races and yeah. a good competitive bench show and everything else. But uh, this year, an, an Isaiah Kid Award, we'll start out with that. Their Isaiah Kid Award is for their overall night hunt winner. Then they have their Isaiah Kid Opposite Sex. You know, all of the uh, – all winning king and queen of your of your respective breed association is a big deal, but it seems like from the plot guys, the Isaiah kid is just you're if you win that, you're you're the man or the mm, woman. Mm. Whoever wins that, you you have that distinction and they remember you uh from year to year. And this year the Isaiah kid overall night hunt winner was Grand Knight Champion, champion Savage Redwood Hokies Hatchet, owned by Zachary Savage of Maryland, a dog that Jacob Coons was hunting. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations to, to all the connections there, and uh, very impressive. And the opposite sex went, went to champion water champion PR late night impressive tap out. That's uh, owned by Corey Hall and Don Jenkins of uh, and Patrick Nall actually of uh, of Michigan. So uh, uh, congratulations to them. The overall in the opposite sex Isaiah Kid winners. I actually messaged both of them when I saw that they had won. I, Jacob Coons, I believe it was two years ago, maybe, where he won uh, the Isaiah Kidd Award with Hokie, which yep. is Hatchet's sire. And then when I messaged Corey Hall and told him congratulations, he sent me back uh, 4X exclamation time. So I assume this is the fourth <laughs> time he's yeah. done this. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So great job to those winners. Mm -hmm. Now we'll fast forward to the show. Uh, King of show. Uh, for the overall show, obviously at, at plot days they do like a king of show each day, but they bring back all of their their overall category winners, uh, males and and females to show for king and queen of show. This year the king of show was RX Hounds Tough Foot Big Johnny. Uh, that's a plot. The owner in our owner in our system is Michael Betzold of Michigan, uh, but I saw uh, Joe Polly's name associated with this dog as well. So I don't know if he was handling the dog or if he's just recently purchased the dog uh -huh. or what the deal is, but. One thing that stands out to me is I don't see any titles on the dog here. Like, it's still in the registered category, so it must be a pretty nice dog. It's, uh, no, to, to, to beat everybody else. Queen of Show is a champion dog named Showbiz Digging in or Digging on You uh, that is owned by LaDonna Williams out of, uh, or out of Missouri. And we, we know LaDonna. She's, uh, she has uh, all, been showing plot hounds for a long, long time. Has had some really nice ones, had a lot of success. And here's another one, Digging on You as a Queen of Show. Seems like every time I see LaDonna, she's always got like a tubbleware full of snacks to hand out to people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of missed that. Just a nice person, very yeah. friendly, and just loves loves dogs, loves people, you know, and, and uh, loves her plots. Absolutely. And this year, uh, the art is all, so on Wednesday night, the events get started on Wednesday night at Plot Days with a youth event. And for the past several years, I don't know if it's always been this way or what, but that was a non-licensed hunt that they did. And this year actually licensed that hunt for them, their Art Gage Memorial uh, Youth Hunt on Wednesday night. And the overall winner for that was Lane Tibbs. Uh, he was handling a dog named TTT, Lane's Rufus the Doofus. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a Trium Walker owned by Robert Tibbs Jr. of Indiana. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so congratulations to Lane and and I'm guessing Rufus. May Rufus, unless he does, yeah, maybe that's uh, when he does good, call him Rufus. If he's not so good, we call him Doof. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, there you go. Plot days, uh, that's always a fun one, too. It's different. You know, we always talk about our own events, whether it's Autumn Oaks Winter Classic, the world and stuff. You know, and you go to, and I'm sure you probably say the same and would agree, you go to all the breed day events. They're all different. Every one of them. They're all different. And it's it makes them unique because they're all different. A lot of it has to do with the people. Uh, you know, obviously the hounds are different breeds and this and that. But uh, uh, you go to English days, they love their English hounds. You go to plot days, I don't think there's a breed that loves their dogs any any more, any better than the plot hounds love their breed of dogs. You know, and, Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, they're very passionate about it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, that's Pot, what makes it interesting. It does. Plot days is always fun. And it, that's, uh, it's, it's, I miss some of those. I haven't got to go to in the last couple of years, kind of since you came along. And I miss going to some of these events. Miss the people. And then the, the last chartered breed day event just happened here recently, June 27th through 29th. And that was down in Tell City, Indiana this year. And we're talking about National Red Bone Days. Uh, Tell City is always a great place for, for an event down there on Sunflower Road uh, down in the holler. Uh, it's always a great feeling. You feel like you're at a at a 
a great venue and doing out an event there. And uh, Redbone Days went well from all I heard. I didn't get to make it down there this year. Uh, there was just some different obligations. But uh, Brandon Scalf, our field rep from Kentucky, was down there and was in my place. And he had a great time uh, mingling with all the club folks and the association folks. Uh, maybe converting him to a Redbone man. Who knows? But uh, uh, looking at the overall results here, the overall night hunt winner this year was night champion Kaufman's Worth the Weight. That's a red bone male owned by Mr. Mike Young in Tennessee. So congratulations to Mike on his win. And then the opposite sex winner was a guy who's been making his rounds this year. I've seen him at a lot of major events. And that's Mr. Gene Ng from Illinois with his dog, night champion champion Ng's Red Mojo. On the other side of things, we have our overall bench show winner. And no surprise here, this dog's been on an incredible run the past year since almost last year. National Grand Champion, Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Wabash River Lost Highway, owned by Andy and Keith Emery, and Curtis and Nikki Elber. And then the opposite sex in the bench show was Grand Champion Stone Nickel Big Sky. That's a female here owned by Mary and Rodney Bergbauer of Indiana. So congratulations to all those winners. Congratulations to everybody on a great weekend there. And congratulations to everybody at Charter Breed Day events. We've talked about all the winners from all seven Charter Breed Day events this year. I know all the associations are working on making plans for next year. Got locations and dates set, so be on the lookout for that information rolling out um, in different places. Looking forward to that. Make make plans to go. It's always a great time. So that's kind of a wrap on this episode. It's a, it's an exciting time in the Kunal world. Uh, entries for the. Autumn Oaks and the World Championship online just opened, so be sure to go to the website, check those out, get those dogs entered up. And uh, we've got Youth Nationals coming up here in a, another week. So a lot of good things going on right now, so get those dogs ready and get them out. And until then, we'll talk to you next time. Alan, I know we both have new Daltra Pathfinder 2s. How are you liking yours so far? I'm liking it. I've even had the opportunity now to use mine where I didn't have service, where I download uh, the map of that area, and uh, it works flawlessly. Love it. I agree. I really like my Daltra Pathfinder 2 as well. I've used it quite a bit the past few months. I really like the crystal clear maps. I like that it doesn't lose uh, service very much, and I, can't have, I don't have many bad things to say about it at all. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.